Okay, so now we're going to go over a quick example like the last one of unsteady diffusion, but in this case the geometry is of a sphere. Uh, so the same thing again is that our solute is going to be diffusing into our s the sphere, and the bulk concentration of the solute we'll say is C1. For our coordinate system, we'll set up at the very center of the sphere, R is going to be equal to zero, and uh, the radius will be uh, capital R. So the governing equation for this geometry is given by fixed second law. And you can see that fixed second law um, is just going to be simple diffusion into the sphere, so it's spherical coordinate um, uh, system, and there's no reaction nor convection. Um, from fixed second law here for spherical coordinates, uh, we can then set up our initial condition and our um, boundary conditions to be able to solve this partial differential equation. So our initial conditions are kind of like the same thing uh, with the slab. Um, the initial condition within the slab, within the uh, sorry, the sphere, um, initially it has a concentration of C naught uh, between R equals zero and uh, capital R. Or any times greater than zero, the two boundaries that we're going to look at will be the surface of the sphere, which is going to be at R equals capital R. Um, and at this point right here, surrounding the sphere at the surface, the concentration will always be equal to C1. Uh, the other uh, boundary will be the center of the sphere, so it's R equals zero. Um, again, due to the geometry, we can um, look at symmetry and know that the concentration um, around any point uh, from the center is going to be the same. So again, uh, any of these points right through here at the same distance, little r, is going to have the exact same concentration. Uh, so the concentration gradient will be equal to zero. So very similar to the last uh, way we set up, the only difference is the geometry is changed. Um, again, because of the change in the geometry, we're going to have slightly di different dimensionless variables. The concentration dimensionless concentration theta remains the same, but um, eta changes from y over l for rectangular coordinates to little r over big R for your uh, sphere, and your tau dimensionless time will change to t times the diffusion coefficient divided by uh, capital R squared, your radius. Uh, so finally, again, we use these dimensionless variables to change our um, governing equation into uh, non-dimensionalized terms here. Um, again, this math is shown in the book. I'm not going to go over it. And just as we did before with the rectangular slab, the, uh, the non-dimensionalized initial condition and boundary conditions can also be converted using these uh, dimensionless variables, just as we did before. Um, and so you can see that they, they are very similar as the ones in the slab, just that we're now look dealing with um, um, the different geometry. Uh, so for the non-dimensionalized concentration, um, it's shown in graphical terms, and that is 6.20 in the book. So uh, same thing as before, as you can see that as time increases, uh, the lines get more horizontal, showing that the uh, concentration throughout the slab is uh, uh, becoming uniform, uh, or sorry, throughout the sphere is becoming uniform as we enter the uh, sphere to the center of the sphere. Um, but you can see that um, the concentrations, the uh, sorry, the non-dimensionalized time, uh, when it to reach steady state, um, which again is going to be this horizontal line, is closer to tau equal to point, uh, point 0.5. And if we compare it to 16.19 for the slab, you can see that, remember, that one was going to be tau is equal to 2. So the, the time, the non-dimensionalized time that it takes to get to steady state in the sphere is going to be much shorter than in the slab. And that's due to the geometry. Because as you're diffusing into the slab, um, the uh, cross-sectional area that the molecule is diffusion through is going to remain the same. But in the sphere, your cross-sectional area is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as you move into the center of the sphere. So it takes much less time to reach steady state. And just like before, if we say that uh, tau is equal to 0.5 and when the line's horizontal and the concentrations are the same throughout the slab, um, then we can figure out the uh, 
uh, time it takes to reach steady state, which is given by this equation. So remember that was a little bit slightly different from the time in the slab to reach steady state in which it was two times uh, r squared. So as you can see again, it's a little bit faster to reach steady state in the sphere.